Hi there YouTubes, this is Grimweird and I am attempting to capture for posterity um, my favorite aspects of the Final Fantasy XIV crafting system. It is my favorite crafting system um, in MMORPGs and so I want to make sure that I uh, have a good record of why I liked it for when I discuss it in the future. So first off um, we'll talk a bit about how they do crafting each area of crafting, armorer, um, leather worker, weaver, etc., alchemist, um, is a different profession that you level separately, which that right there makes sense to me. I mean, you're not going to uh, be a great blacksmith just because you're a great cook. So that is uh, the first step. Um, you actually get better at each of these professions at a different rate. The next thing is that you aren't limited to just one profession. Again, that's something I like because I enjoy all crafting and I don't see why a character could be a good blacksmith but wouldn't be a good armorer or is capable of making leather armor but can't cook an omelet. So I like being able to have my character um, progress in multiple professions. The next thing I like is that there's actually a whole series of um, gear for crafters. And so for instance here you can see I am dressed up as my uh, in my alchemist gear. I'm a top level alchemist and I've got excellent alchemist gear and it looks all fancy. Um, if I switch over to something like armorer well now I'm wearing basically newbie clothes because I am only a level 8 armorer as opposed to a level 50 alchemist. Um, if I go to culinarian um, or leather worker or something else I'm gonna have different gear at different levels. If we take a look um, if I mouse over my gear I'm a level 15 leather worker and I've got a level 15 cotton scarf that gives me stat bonuses for crafting. And yet if I go back to Alchemist and look at my gear, now I've got an Alchemist monocle. Um, there I can show it. And my Alchemist monocle is a level 50 piece of gear that has much better stats. So I've got gear progression and I've got skill progression. If we look at what skill does for me, um, if I open up my crafting log, you can see that I get access to new recipe levels as I level up, as I get skill. And so for, um, again, let's take a look at leather working. For leather working, where I'm 15th, I only have access to the first through 20th level recipes. But if we go to alchemy where I'm 50th level, now I have access to all the way from 1 to 50th level recipes. So again, the more you work at a crafting thing, the better you get. So there's a reward, you know, if you put work into the craft, you get better at it. So the other thing I like is that it treats it again sort of like any other class, like an adventuring class. So for instance, over here, if we look at my actions, as a level 50 alchemist, I have skills like Comfort Zone, which is a level 50 skill that I can use while attempting to craft something. And, you know, I started out with only basic synthesis, which is just sort of a basic try to combine an item. But as I go up, I get more and more interesting skills. They also do an interesting thing, which you're seeing a lot now in games, of being able to partially multi-class. So, for instance, if I go to the Additional Skills tab, I have the ability to have 10 additional actions. And if I look at my other things, um, if I go to Carpenter, Rumination, which is a level 15 Carpenter skill, I can actually add that to my alchemist action bar and use it while I'm an alchemist. If we go to culinarian, um, there are a couple of 
cross-class skills, hasty touch at level 15, steady hand 2 at level 37, that I can take and add to my actions and use as an alchemist. If I switch back over to, say, leatherworking, um, so now as a leatherworker, let's actually switch my character over. So now I'm a leather worker, and if I go to actions, um, you can see that I can only have three additional skills, but I can use uh, ones from from like culinarian or alchemist or whatever, and so I can pull those over and then drag them drag them down to my bar and potentially use them to be a better leather worker. So again, if you are good at crafting and have put a lot of effort into a lot of skills, it actually helps you and makes you better across the board at all crafting. So again, you're rewarded for putting effort into being a crafter. So let's see. The next thing uh, we can talk about is head back to Alchemist is that the act of crafting itself is a contested result so it's not just push a button hit a combine and succeed or fail you actually have input into whether you succeed or fail by using these actions that you get as you skill up not only that there is strategy involved in which actions you use, when you use them. You have a CP crafting point pool that is like an energy pool for you to use certain actions. So you've got to ration your points, perhaps use abilities that give you points back. You have to ration the durability of the ingredients that you use, and you have to balance progression towards completion versus wearing out the durability of your ingredients versus um, how much of a quality chance you have during the thing, during the combine. So let's take a look at it. I actually haven't played Final Fantasy XIV for a while here so I'm not necessarily remembering how things go but let's just try to make something and I'll show you what I'm talking about so if I go to my crafting log and uh, let's see what can I make let's make this a uh, wand of frost so right away I have some strategy I have both normal quality ingredients which are an oak branch an eye of ice and a growth formula gamma and I have a few high quality items so going into it um, this is going to have a difficulty of 137 that's how many points I will need to accumulate to actually finish the combination it has a durability of 80 so that means I'll have um, a decent amount of, of durability to work with before I run out um, and then currently it's at zero quality out of 2026 and I will have chances to increase the quality chance as I am crafting but right away I have some choices to make um, I can use all normal quality items or I can use a high quality eye of ice and a high quality growth formula gamma so right now I'm going to be starting the process the crafting process with 634 quality out of 2026 so already I've got a better chance of creating a high quality wand of frost which will have better stats than if I used um, low quality items let's try a, a normal quality one first so I'm gonna hit synthesize and now we're looking at uh, at 
the, the balancing act that takes place. So my durability is 80 out of 80. Every time I do an action um, that progresses the um, crafting, it's going to use up probably around 10 durability, depending on which skills I'm using. Also during this time, I'm not only going to be potentially moving the progress bar to completion, I have to get 137 progress to successfully finish the Wand of Frost, but I could also be raising my quality and getting a higher percentage chance of getting a high quality result. Then another thing that I'm looking at here is the condition of my um, of my synthesis. So right now the condition is normal and I'm not facing any kind of emergencies or events that uh, that I need to deal with strategically. So let's just do something here. Um, if I look at my abilities, here's careful synthesis. It has a zero control point cost. It has an efficiency of 90% at increasing progress. So it's not as good at, in at increasing progress as some of the other syntheses. syntheses. The success rate is 100%, so I can't fail. So if I hit this, boom, I do 82 progress, and I've used up 10 durability, and I have zero quality still. And the condition of my synthesis has now turned to good. So with the condition good, things are going well, this bar is lighting up and it will restore 20 control points so it's sort of like a mana regen opportunity and it can only be used when material condition is good so right now um, I haven't actually used any control points but I could do that and get some back or crafting points and so Right now, um, at 82 from one careful synthesis, it becomes obvious that even if I just do this once more, I will finish this. So I'm not in any danger of failing a Wand of Frost, which is understandable. I'm a very high level alchemist in very good gear with, um, and this is only a 40 something level um, crafting thing but I want to get a chance for a high quality thing so I'm gonna look down here for um, abilities that help quality and uh, let's see alright so my basic touches and advanced touches are different skills which use a different amount of crafting points as cost and can increase rates and have different success rates I'm going to go ahead and hit Advanced Touch, which will increase quality. It has a success rate of 90% and an efficiency of 150%, so it's a, a very high quality move. So let's go ahead and try that. So now you can see with my current gear and level and etc., I got 308 quality and my high quality percent chance went from 1% to 4% and my durability went down another 10 so it is now 60 out of 80 my progress remains the same uh, my crafting points went from 300 down to 252 so let's go ahead and uh, do that again so now I only had a 90 percent chance of doing that and I did fail that my crafting points has now gone down to 204 my durability is now down to 50 and I did not make any kind of progress let's try it again I succeeded. I got another 205 quality. My high quality percentage chance is now up to 70%. My durability is now down to 40 out of 80, so I gotta start thinking about that. So let's see what other kinds of things I've got going on here. Um, I have got a variety of things that are like buffs. So for instance, inner quiet grants a bonus to control with every increase in quality. 
So this is a buff that, let's go ahead and throw that on myself. So now I have that buff on me. And now every time I do a quality advance, I will get a stat stack bonus, which makes my progress better when I do a progress move. Not really necessary in this particular thing, but it's the kind of thing that you can do. Um, waste Not reduces the loss of durability by 50% for the next four steps. So I'm only at 40 of 80 durability, and you use lose 10 per step. So in theory, I've got only four steps left, but I can use Waste Not to extend that. Um, Master's Mend 2 restores item durability by 60 and it requires 160 crafting points. So I don't have enough to do that left anymore. Here's a Master's Mend 1. It restores item durability by 30 um, and it costs 92 crafting points. So let's go ahead and do something like that. You can see that right now my crafting points is 138 going to do that. And my crafting points goes down to 46, but my durability went from 40 back up to 70. So now let's see, I need some cheap. I already know that for zero crafting points and 100% success rate, I only need one more careful synthesis to get enough progress to finish this. So that leaves me 46 crafting points and I want to try and squeeze some more quality out of this. So here's a hasty touch. It only has a success rate of 50% but it has zero crafting points. Um, so this is a, a level 15 culinarian skill. So let's go ahead and try this. So it didn't succeed because again it only has a 50% success rate but it doesn't cost me any crafting points and I've gone from 70 durability down to 60. Let's hit it again and I succeeded and now I'm up to a 9% chance of quality. The condition has changed to good so that opens up a chance to um, potentially get some um, reactive skills going. I'm going to use Tricks of the Trade, which is one of my Alchemist ones, and it restores 20 crafting points. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Since that was sort of a buff thing, it uh, didn't use up durability. But now my crafting points has gone from 46 back up to 66. That gives me the chance to use um, Advanced touch again, which is a high quality maneuver. So let's go ahead and do that. So now I'm up to a 12% chance of a high quality result. And my durability is down to 40. We're going to hasty touch. And hasty touch. And now my durability is down to 20 out of 80, so I'm getting sort of low. Um, Rumination is a carpenter skill, which I am cross-class using. It removes this inner quiet buff, and for every stack of, of quality advance, it'll give me some control points. So I'm going to go ahead and use that reactive one. And so now I have some more control points again. Um, and I now have enough to use another advanced touch but condition is also good so that gives me the chance to use tricks of the trade to get some more control points back so now I'm up to 70 control points which is enough to do almost anything I can do here um, but I'm getting low on durability when I get down to 10 out of 80 I'm gonna have to go ahead and do a careful synthesis finish my progress and complete so do I have any way to get more durability out um, Master's Mend has a control, a craft point cost of 92 and I've only got 70. 
waste not reduces the loss of durability by 50% for the next four steps and it costs 56 so I can afford this now so let's go ahead and do that so now I've got four stacks of durability loss reduction on me so when I do something like um, a hasty touch now I've only gone down five durability instead of ten the condition has gone to good so that lets me sneak back some more crafting points and we'll try hasty synthesis again successfully my high quality percent chance is up to 18 percent I have one charge left there um, I've only got 34 crafting points So let's go ahead and just do a basic touch quality maneuver here. So now I'm up to a high quality percentage chance of 21%. My buff of, of lower durability cost has gone down. Um, I'm about out of control points. So we're pretty much down to just doing a careful synthesis. And my progress went up to 137 and completed and I made a um, Wanda Frost and I did not get a high quality Wanda Frost so again I haven't played in a while and uh, that was not the most effective rotation or use of my skills and crafting points um, but it gives you an idea of how complicated each combine is in crafting and how much strategy there is to it if I really wanted to make a high quality one I could um, use a high quality um, Eye of Ice and a high quality Growth Formula Gamma and start synthesis. And now you can see I'm already starting with an 8% before I've even done anything. And to use a slightly better strategy here, um, I'm going to go ahead and do um, Inner Quiet early to get that buff on me early and then I'm going to use um, Steady Hand 2. It improves action success rate by 30% for the next five steps. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So now I have five stacks of plus 30% success rate. And then I'm going to use my, let's say, Advanced Touch. This is a uh, maneuver that gives me a lot of quality. And now with my steady hand I can't fail on it so I'm gonna go advanced touch and advanced touch and advanced touch and yeah, let's just keep going keep going so now um, I'm down to 30 out of 80 durability, but you can see my quality percent chance is all the way up to 94%. And uh, I'm down to only 17 craft points, but I can do the reaction and get 20 back. So now I'm up to 37. I've also got uh, rumination, remove stacks of inner quiet, and uh, restores crafting points so I could do that so now I'm up back up to 82 I'm only at 30 durability um, I know from my last thing that I need to do at least two careful synthesis syntheses to finish this so I can go ahead and do something like I want a 100% high quality percent chance so let me go ahead and try one careful synthesis just to verify my progress and yeah it went up to 82 out of 137 so I only need to do one more of those so that leaves me enough to try one more advanced touch 
Boom, I've now maxed out my high quality percent chance. And I have 10 out of 80 durability left. Careful synthesis to finish. And I create a high quality Wanda Frost. So here you can see that well, let me explain why, why I like this. First, there's a lot of progression. There's crafting gear progression. There's crafting skill progression. There is the ability to cross-class your skills. There is strategy for how you set up your hotkey bar and what rotation you use your skills in. Um, you can have different rotations for different uh, goals. If you don't care about making a high quality item, but you just want to make a bunch of basic potions for, is for instance, you can just whip out a bunch of them. If I want to um, make a whole stack of things that are like low level, like, uh, let's see if I have anything on me here. If I want to make a bunch of just easy stuff, then I can just bust it out really quick. They have an auto combine. Uh, here's one. Synthesize. So this is some low level rubber. So here, if I don't care about getting high quality rubber, um, I can just bust it out because I am high level. Um, or if I want to just make a bunch of them because this is a low level thing, it's not going to give me much experience. I don't care if I get high quality or not. I can go to quick synthesis and I can make a max of 44 of them based on my skill compared to the low level recipe. And if I want to make 10 of them, and again, this is just a, a low level material it's an intermediary product, it's not a finished good. And I can hit synthesize and I will just bust out 10 of them automatically. So this does, means that you you don't have to go through the complex crafting thing that I just showed you for the wand. If you're making a bunch of low-level stuff, you can just set up a quick synthesis and make a bunch of rubber to be used in in various other um, recipes. So this is another aspect of, of the the crafting system that I like. Um, so yeah, uh, those are the kinds of things I like about this system. There's a lot of progression. There's gear progression. There's skill progression. There's cross-class skills. There is strategy to what skills you learn and what crafts you learn. There is strategy to how you use up your control points. There is strategy to how, um, which skills you use when, depending on whether you just want to make it fast or whether you want to try and make a high quality item. Um, there is basically the more attention you pay and the harder you work at it, the better chance you have of making high quality items. There are actually some randomness in there in that not all of your skills have a 100% chance of success. There's some randomness in there in that the condition can go from poor to excellent to good. There are reactionary skills to use so that if you have different conditions, like if I'm in a good condition, I can use tricks of the trade to get some crafting mana back. So it's a very um, contested system, and it's also, a, you have to, to do it well, you have to pay attention and actually think about what you're doing, as opposed to just going click, combine, click, combine, click, combine, like a lot of systems are. And I love the fact that you have to balance your crafting points, which is your energy for crafting, 
the durability of the ingredients, the quality of your result, and the progress through building whatever you're crafting. So there's multiple, multiple pools going on at once, and you have to balance those to get the results you want. So it's a very involved and interactive experience, as opposed to just clicking combine and getting a result. And there's also not only skill involved in getting quality out, but there's, there's um, predictability. So if I use higher quality items, there's a better chance of getting a higher quality result. And I can get a feel for that. It tells me up front that, you know, out of a 2026 quality score needed to have a 100% chance of getting a high quality item, if I add a couple of high quality ingredients, I will start with a 600 out of 2026. So that gives me some predictability. It's not completely random. I'm not completely at the mercy of a random number generator. But I can have some predictability about, you know, is it worth it um, to use the high quality items? And uh, anyway, I'm babbling at this point. But this is the kind of complex interactive things where the actual act of crafting an object is interesting. And that's what I like about this system. Um, it's similar to the EverQuest 2 system, except there you're really only balancing, really only balancing two pools as opposed to four. They have like a progress and a durability. And in theory, you can run out of their version of crafting points or even run out of hit points if you fail to counter bad events. But in reality, you're really only balancing progress and durability for most crafting in EverQuest 2. Whereas in this one, you really are actively balancing progress, durability, and quality, and crafting points. Um, so this is a very engaging system that makes you feel good about getting a good result and makes you work at, work at it and think about it. All right, I think I've babbled enough, but... Uh, this is the kind of crafting that I like, and it's the kind of crafting I hope to see more of in future games. Thank you.